Hello everyone and welcome back to the data structures and algorithms course. The topic for today's lecture is going to be depth first search. So depth first search, what is it? So it is a strategy for exploring a graph. So in the previous lecture, we talked about uh, graphs and uh, data structure and we introduced uh, how it looks like. So depth first search is a way of traversing the entire graph and searching for some elements. So what is the ideology between behind this so we explore deeper in the graph whenever possible so we will see what that means so edges are explored out of the most recently discovered vertex v that still has unexplored edges so we go by vertex by vertex v if that vertex v has an edge that leads to uh, an, that leads to a vertex which has not been explored yet then we go to that vertex and then we repeat this until we go through all the vertices so when all these edges have been explored, backtrack to the vertex from which V was discovered. So we look at a practical example. So for a depth first search can be used to attempt to visit all nodes of a graph in a systematic manner. So we will see how that is, how that is done. So uh, the, the things to keep in mind is that the DFS works with directed as well as undirected graphs. So it's not just for undirected graphs, you can do so for directed also. And similarly, it also works for weighted as well as unweighted graphs. So let's walk through uh, one example of how DFS works. So first of all, we have a visited array, which is a Boolean array, in which we'll store whether a vertex has been visited or not. And then we have a stack, which we have here on the right. And this is the graph we have taken for an example. So task is to conduct a DFS of the graph starting with node D. So we start at node D and we want to traverse through the entire graph. So let's see how it's done. So first of all, we start at D and uh, whenever we, so what we're doing is we are marking the visited array of D as true. So as you can see here, it is shown as red in color and here we have ticked it. And in the stack, we also put D. So what we've done is we have visited D. So uh, in the left hand corner here, we are showing the order in which we are visiting all nodes. So we have visited D just now. So from D, what we are doing is we see which all nodes we can go to. So since this is a directed graph, we see the away pointing arrow. So we can go to C, we can go to F and we can go to E because these three are the outwards pointing arrow from D. So now what we will do is we have to select one of these on uh, to which we have to which we will go. So consider node adjacent to D and decide which uh, which node to visit. So in this case, we are visiting alphabetical order. So since C comes first, so we will visit C first. So we went to C. We uh, we made this visited array of uh, C as true, and uh, you can see the color has been shown as red. And then we put C into a stack. So orders of node visited now has become D and C. So now since uh, we have visited C, now we'll check again for uh, where we can go from C. So as you can see here, there is no arrow pointing out out of C. So no nodes adjacent to C. So we cannot continue further from C. So what we have to do in this case is we have to backtrack back to D. So we have to backtrack. So how do we do that? We jump back to D and we pop out from the stack so you can see here c has been removed from the stack so we now just have d so what we can think now is now we have to return back to d so now what we do is we again check for uh, neighbors of d so since we have already visited c we check c has been visited it has been ticked so we ignore c then next comes e so e we see has not been ticked yet so e has not been visited yet so we can safely go to E. So we visit E. It is ticked. That shows us that we have visited E and we put it into our stack. Now from E, we will again check for any outwards pointing arrow. And we can see that G is the only adjacent node to E. So we visit G. We tick the visited array of G and then we push it into our stack. From G, you can see we have two nodes which are coming out. So one is D and one is H. So since alphabetical order, we will check for D first. But for D, we see that the visited has been true. It is ticked. 
so that means we don't have to check again so what we can do is we can skip d and then we can go to h so nodes d and h are adjacent to g d has already been visited so we can see check this using this visited arrow so since it is stick we can uh, ignore d and so we decide to visit h we go to h this has been ticked and we push it into our stack so uh, after h again we check for our outgoing arrows so here we see a comes so we visit a a has been ticked and then again from a we can see there is an arrow to b so we go to b so now you can see everything is ticked apart from f and our stack looks like this so from b now you can see there is no uh, arrows pointing outwards so what we have to do is we have to pop it out of the stack and we have to back up. so we pop it out of the stack so here it was b so we pop it out b has been removed from stack and we go back so now we are back to a now from a also we check there is no more nodes which have which are adjacent to a that we can go to so we pop a out of the stack also and we backtrack to h from h also you can see there is no more node we can visit so we pop out h and we go back to g from g also there is no more nodes we can visit we pop out g and we go back to e from e also no more nodes so we pop out e we go back to d and from finally here d we can see there is a node that we can go to and that is f so we can go to f and f is unvisited and is adjacent to d so we decide to visit f we can finally click tick on f and you can see that all nodes are visited so what our algorithm will do is now check for any neighbors of f so since there is no more adjacent nodes connected to f so we backtrack from f so we pop out f and now we are here and then finally since there are no more no no more uh, nodes you can visit to from g so from d we pop out d and you can see our stack is empty now and all nodes have been visited so since uh, our stack becomes empty we can say our search is done so our def first traversal is done completed so we can finish our process so in this way we have traversed through the entire graph we visited each vertex once in this particular order so we went to d first then we went to c then we went to e g h a b and finally so uh, we'll show the code coming out so what we are doing is we are assigning some color coding so vertices are initially colored white so just like yeah, okay it's not here in this example but when these are not ticked when we have not visited a node then we initially color them white then we color it gray when we discover a node and then finally we color it black when we finish our visit so when it is in a stack it will remain gray and when it's popped out of a stack it will become black that is the idea behind this color coding so this is the code as you can see so dfs is the main code so for each vertex u belonging to g arrow v we assign it the color white and then we initially set the timer counter as zero so for each vertex u belonging to g arrow v if u arrow color is equal to white then we visit so we have to start at an initial point so we choose a node which has not been visited yet so we go to that and we call this dfs visit function so dfs visit function is our main dfs function so what we're doing is when when we commit using u so we assign the color as gray so we arrived uh, arrived at that node and we incre increment our time counter by one and then we assign its uh, initial value as d so uh, so d is our value where we store our uh, time at which we came to that vertex and then this we use this loop for each v belonging to u of adjacent adjacency list so we check for all the uh, all the vertices that are adjacent to v and we check if they are color white then we visit that node so here we earlier checked here we checked that d arrow f so since f was not visited we can say that it was white in color so when we visit we check for that condition and since it is white we can go to that 
so we visit that white and uh, then after all the vertices have been visited we can say that we can go come out of that node so we can assign that the color black we increment the timer and we say that the leaving time from that vertex is time so you using this recursive solution you can see that our dfs search is done so our urod what does it represent it represents the time at which we entered that vertex and urof here indicates the time at which we left our vertex so the time we pushed it initially into a stack and urf is the time we popped it out of the stack and will all the vertices eventually be colored black the answer is true let's visit each node once so uh, there could be an example where there is a cycle here and then there are some nodes in the uh, remaining half so what it can do is you can go through one cycle first and then when we come back using this loop we will visit all node at least once so since you are checking for each vertex since initially all vertices are white if this recursive solution does not visit all the vertex then when it comes back to this for loop it will check for all vertices so in a case everything would be colored black and the running time what will it be so initially you might think that the uh, running time is order of n square because dfs visit on each vertex and the loop and the in the worst case you might think that it may run at v times but uh, the actual answer is that it would be order of n so we'll see it uh, provides a much tighter bound so how many times will dfs visit be called so dfs visit you can say see mm. that each vertex will call it once so in that case our running time would become order of v plus e so this running time argument is an informal example of amortized analysis and the charge of exploration of h to h so in each loop dfs visit can be attributed to an edge in the graph and it runs once per edge if it is a directed graph and twice if it is undirected so thus the loop will run in order of e times and the algorithm of order v plus e so here is another example let's look at this so we assign this as the source vertex so we'll have d and f value store so initially everything was white so first we come to this node we make this gray and the timer would become one so we store one in the d then from this we can go to these three locations so we visit this first node and here you can see that we color it gray and then the timer counter would increment by one so it would now become two then from here we visit three, this nodes the timer will become three and then here you can see there is no more node coming out so it is one more is coming here but it is already gray so we cannot go here so we can say that we uh, we can pop it out of the stack so in popping we increment the timer by one and we set it set it as the finish time so finish time is four and then we backtrack to here and from here another node is coming here so we make this gray and the timer now becomes five and from here there's no more outgoing nodes which have not been visited yet so finish time will become six and we backtrack to here this two node it will also finish so we assign it time seven and then we backtrack this becomes eight so we, from here we went to here eight and then we visited this node which was nine vertex and from here you can see there is no more vertices that we can visit so we have to backtrack we assign the finish time as 10 from here there are no more vertices we can visit so finish it we will pop it out of the stack and assign the finish time as 11 and then finally here also we cannot visit any further nodes so we pop it out and finish time would be first so from here you can see that these two vertices have not yet been searched so in this case our initial let's come back a few slides here now this loop will take into action so we will check for the other two nodes and we can see that their color is still remaining white so we will call dfs visit anywhere 
although this loop ended for our initial vertex so our source vertex was changed so we assign it the value 13 now and we collect this gray and now we check for more vertices so we can finally go here and then we pop it out 15 and pop it out 16 so in this way you can see that it all finished with black so dfs introduces an important distinction among two edges so there are multiple type of edges and we will now define each of them so first is the tree edge so tree edge is encountered when a new node is encountered so uh, let's you can see here that from here we visited a white node which was a new node so this is known as a tree edge you can see that everything in red in color are our tree edges As you can see here everything in red is our tree edges then comes the back edge so back edge is any edge from the descendant to an ancestor so we encounter a gray vertex from our current vertex which is also gray so in this example this green arrow was our back edge so what happened was we went from this vertex to this vertex then on this vertex we went to this vertex from this vertex we checked for this vertex but we uh, but we found out that this was already gray so this was our ancestor so what this is basically showing is that it had already uh, been uh, found earlier in this uh, earlier in this loop so we found this node earlier so we do not have to visit it again this was a back edge then comes a the forward edge so forward edge from an ancestor to a descendant and this is not a tree edge this is from a gray node to a black node so you can see this is a forward edge so since here we went from 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to back to this node and from this vertex we went to this then finally we went back back and then we encountered this so this was already black when we checked for this arrow purple arrow so we checked from gray to black so this is a forward edge the edge was checking from gray to white um, back edge was checking from gray to gray and for forward edges checking from gray to black then the final is the cross edge so cross edge is a cross edge is an edge which is between a tree or subtrees so it is from gray node to a black node so in this case sorry here these blue arrows are the cross edges so we knew that uh, we went from 1 to 2 to 3 back to 2 then to 5 and then from 5 we checked for 3 so we checked that this was already black but this did not came uh, but this was not a parent its parent was you can imagine was 2 you cannot go from 3 to 5 directly so this is known as a cross edge so similarly this is a cross edge because we cannot go from uh, 5 to 9 similarly we cannot go from 5 to 40 so this is a cross edge So these edges, tree and back edges are important. Most algorithms don't distinguish between forward and cross edges. So these edges are you can and you can understand what these edges are. And it's so there is a theorem. So if G is undirected, a DFS produces only tree and back edges. So these four examples, what we defined, were for directed graphs. But if it is undirected, then there is no difference between a back edge and a forward edge. So you can imagine that this was, oh, this was, uh, you can go from this here to here and as well as here to there. So there is no, no, no difference between descendant to ancestor or ancestor to descendant. So if it was, we were here, we could have gone directly to here. Or we could have gone here, here, and then here. So, in this case, back edge and forward edges are the same. Then there is theorem that if G is undirected, a DFS produces only tree and back edges. So, there is you can assume that there is a cross edge here. This is an assumption, but uh, you can see that if we apply DFS, what will happen is we go to source then we go to this vertex 
then let's say we visit this node this vertex first so we won't backtrack here so that it will lead to error from here only we will visit this vertex according to our dfs since this was white so why was this not red that is our question so the answer is that it would be red so we cannot have this as red and then we go back and then this again red so this will not never be a cross edge so this is for undirected graphs so for an, un an undirected graph is acyclic if and only if a dfs yields no back edges so if there is a back edge then there is a cycle in a graph so like this if there was a back edge from here to here you can see that this formed a cycle so you can go from here to here to here to here and then repeat this loop finally infinitely so this is cycle so how do you modify the code to detect a cycle so how do you detect a cycle the answer is in this part so we checked whether the color was white and in that case we visited it but if we found out that the ve arrow color was gray that means we had already that means that the uh, that vertex that vertex v was already in our stack and if it is in stack that means it will form a cycle with that so here it is there defined here so when in the first when in the for loop one is checking whether v arrow color is white we can also check whether v arrow color is gray and if it is then there is a cycle and the running time of this would be order of v plus e and we can determine if there exists any cycle in order v time so that was a dfs this is the algorithm and in what we are doing is basically we are going deeper into our node first and once there is no more nodes you can visit we backtrack to our parent node and then we check for other nodes from that parent until our entire stack becomes empty and we visit each node exactly once so this was dfs and in the next lecture we will gonna start with another searching algorithm known as breadth first search so this was depth first but in the other one we'll go breadth first so we'll we'll go for we'll search for each uh, each uh, uh, adjacent nodes of the source vertex first and then we go to their children and then their children so we'll go layer by layer in that case so we'll look into that in through our next lecture so that was it for today and hope to see you in the next lecture so goodbye